Hello and welcome back to the Sam Beast YouTube channel. My name is David Foxen. Thank you very much for joining me today as we kind of continue a little mini series uh, looking at the ongoing price increases within the IT asset management world. First of all, let's take our ITAM manager's hat off and put our software vendor's hat on and try and look at it from their point of view. So with everything that's going on in the world right now and the actual <laughs> inflation increases that we're seeing across the board, not just in IT, but the world itself, you can kind of understand why they are increasing the costs for their software and also their hardware. Materials are getting more expensive. People are getting more expensive. The world has changed a lot over the past few years. The cost of living has increased substantially. It's all kind of doom and gloom on the economical front and there's recessions that you know potentially might be happening or are happening depending on which part of the world you're from. Now you've obviously got to take all of that into account when they're developing their software, when they're developing their hardware, when they're actually building the hardware and the materials as well, they're gonna incur some increased costs. And how are they gonna get that back? <laughs> through renewals and through their customers. Now, taking my software hardware vendor hat off, putting my ITAM hat back on, my costs have also gone up, right? I'm having to pay more for hardware and software that I've been using for years. My budget hasn't changed. In fact, because of what's going on in the world, my ITAM budget, my hardware budget, my software budget is decreasing. I'm being pushed to make savings and to do cost optimization activities. So how can I actually mitigate some of these costs against my budget so that I don't wildly overspend and that people can still see the value of ITAM? Now, my first bit of advice to you on the software side of things is keep that optimization activities going. Make sure that you're auditing your users if they're not using it after a certain period of time, reclaim it, put it back into your licensing pool. SaaS applications and also the cloud space as well, if they're not being used, reclaim it in the cloud, if it's not being used, stop paying for it. Uh, you know, really quick, simple things that you can do on that space to try and reduce your ITAM, IT related costs. I mean, you should be doing that already, right? I mean, you've already got your software SaaS optimization process nailed. You've probably got some automation in there. Yeah, I know, I know, I knew you would. I knew you would. But if you haven't, you can still do this manually. You can do Excel spreadsheets, you can do email audits, you know, whatever it takes to try and reduce the number of users and licenses out there so that you can reduce your renewal and your licensing costs. Now you can also talk to your FinOps cloud teams as well, just say, give me some data, um, because you want to review what cloud uh, environments and infrastructure is actually being used when it's being used, how often, and is there any opportunity to stop that service from running, maybe overnight, for example, that could save you X amount of money. The hardware side of things, now that gets a little bit trickier because obviously people drop their device, they lose it, it becomes slow and obsolete as new software is released and yada, yada, yada. However, you can still optimize your hardware environment as well, maybe increase the lifespan of the assets that you currently have, you know, maybe you had a three year life cycle, push that to four years, maybe even five years, or maybe don't even have an internal life cycle at all for the near future. Just say if it keeps working, if the user's not moaning about it, if we can still support it, we will keep it within our standard hardware models. You can also make sure that you're reclaiming assets from levers. Again, people that aren't using it. Maybe you've got a department head that likes to store all of the laptops in their cupboard for their new starters or because they need it for data transfer or whatever the case may be. Make sure you're reclaiming those so you can put them back into your stock so that you can reuse them again as well. Another good way to mitigate some of the hardware costs uh, that you may endeavor, you know, instead of buying new all the time, maybe a simple fix might work. Maybe just a clean up of the device, getting any kind of grime and, you know, all the dust and the dirt and stuff that comes off from daily use. Maybe that could, you know, give it a, a brand new life within your organization so that it can be used for another six, 12, 18 months. Maybe even a simple keyboard replacement to get rid of shiny keys. That could cost you less than a hundred dollars, a hundred pounds, a hundred euros but it would save you the cost of buying a brand new one. There's all sorts of ways that you can be creative on the hardware side to make sure that you really stretch the life cycle of that asset within your organization to try and mitigate the price increases that we're seeing. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to avoid them totally. You will have to buy a new kit eventually, but there's options out there for you to optimize. Same for the infrastructure space, same for the server space. Maybe now is actually that ideal time if you're looking to buy new physical servers. 
Maybe now's the time to move it into the cloud. Are you ready? Is your organization ready? Are your teams ready? Could you facilitate that? What kind of total cost of ownership would that look like? How much savings would you make rather than buying the physical tin and trying to maintain it? There's all these kind of questions that you can ask to get an answer that hopefully results in savings or cost avoidances. You can also look at your network equipment, your switches, your routers. Is there anything that you know we can sell on that's been decommissioned? Do we actually really need all of those switches? Do we need that kind of specification? If not, can we sell the ones that we've already got and buy new ones that are cheaper if we can't move to the cloud or make it virtual? The resale market, because of the cost of all the materials on the hardware, the resale market has increased as well. So your assets are actually worth more. That could help save you money. That could help soften that blow of the hardware, the, the materials and the cost of the hardware being increased. And if you couple that with all your proactive approach that you're making on the software, suddenly these price increases don't impact you as much as they could have. But let's make no mistake about it. Some software vendors have publicly announced their price increases. Hardware vendors are increasing their prices all the time, depending on the fluctuation of materials. Don't be surprised if more software vendors come out with price rises due to inflation, due to the cost of living, the current environmental and economic crisis that we're going through in multiple countries across the world. It's bound to happen. Oracle are not going to be the only software vendor increasing their prices. Dell, HP, Lenovo, whoever, they're not going to be the only hardware vendors increasing their prices. So just make sure that you're being proactive. Make sure that you've got control over your assets. Get creative as well. Take advantage of that secondhand uh, resale hardware market and hopefully you can mitigate that price increase and it be less of a blow for you. And with that said, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. What tips would you have for, for reducing the price increase impact on your budgets or your organization or your ITAM function? What would you be doing? What kind of cool, creative, itami things uh, are you going to do to try and reduce your costs while still providing the assets, the software and the service to your end users? And I would really love to hear what you're doing and your opinions on this. And hopefully we'll see you next time. But until then, have a good one. See you soon. And thank you very much for joining me.